But yeah, I guess what's the the rundown on Alcorn State? It looks like a, a team that could have, maybe should have made the tournament last year, a chance to win their league this year. Yeah, I mean, you know, when you look at Alcorn State, you know, two-time SWAC champs, and and uh, you know, they have a returning point guard in in number two, Joshua, who, um, you know, got great quickness with the ball, high steel player, um, ability to make three-point shots, and then they have uh, you know some really good shooters. Uh, number 10, Gambrell, uh, took 10 threes in their exhibition game the other day. And and um, Jones, number four, and, and Hawkins, number three. Those guys can shoot the ball. And, and Thorne is a returner who did not play in their exhibition game the other day, number 12, who who was one of the uh, SWAC best three-point shooters. So, uh, you know, they have some experience and then a lot of new players as well. They're They're well coached. Um, they play it at, at, a, at a certain pace. Um, they try to dictate the tempo of, of the game as well. I also wanted to ask you about Layden Blocker. It seems like every time he takes the floor, he gets better and better. It looks like he was up for the challenge in his minutes against Purdue. Just, I guess, what progression have you seen from him so far? And, and how do you feel like his preseason has gone? Yeah, Layden's, uh, you know, I think in the minutes that he's been given, he's done a great job. He's got great toughness. He's kind of fearless. He's He's a he's a really really good uh, defensive ball pressure player. Um, he can pick pick up full court, um, you know. And then I think offensively, he's he's done a really good job of trying to facilitate as well as you know as well as 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 as, as being aggressive to 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 score the ball as well. Bob, hey Eric, how you doing? Good. Um, how are you? Yeah, I wanted to ask you about – I had a couple of people ask me, hey, was he hurt the other day? And I said, well, I don't think so. I think he just maybe wasn't physically a good matchup for Purdue's bigs. But what what went into to Bay not not playing the other day? Yes, I mean, we sent Bay down to the, uh, you know, to the scorer's table at one point. Um, and then there was a matchup that we wanted to stick with what we had. So we had him come back down. Um, you know, but Bay's done a great job in practice. He's a, He's a worker. Um, you know, but we just, you know, it was a situation where Chandler Lawson was, was really following the game plan and, and it was hard to take him out based on, um, you know, the way that he was defending, um, you know, Edie and then, and then obviously, you know, Kai did a great job too, although the five fouls in 18 minutes, um, you know, so between those two, those two guys ate up, um, you know, the, the, the center spot. And then we played, you know, we went with some, some guards as well. Um, you know, a couple of guards got some minutes at the four spot, Bob. So I think that's, you know, and we, and we played, you know, the rotation was, was fairly large for us as is. And, and you know, there are a lot of teams that guys like, like Bay and Layton, they'd, they'd be starting, you know, um, what does it say about y'all that, you know, the talent you've accumulated that you can kind of, how, how good is it, I guess, to, to eat, you can ease these as talent as they are, you can ease these freshmen in, you're not having to throw them into the fire. And last year you had great freshmen, but you did have to play a lot of freshmen, a lot of minutes early. How, how good is it to be able to ease these guys in and kind of, how would you say they're adjusting to that? Cause they're obviously used, used to being, you know, the, the center of attention on, on their high school or AU teams or whatever. Yeah, no, I think that, um, you know, there's always adjustment for freshmen across the country. You look at, um, you know, especially in our league, um, just like there's an adjustment in the NBA. I mean, you look at some NBA rookies and and they're playing a lot. And you look at other NBA rookies and they're not playing a lot. You look at some NBA rookies and they're assigned to G League teams and other NBA rookies are learning by sitting on the bench and watching and, and getting better during practice and growing so I think every player is on his own timeline and, and every organization in the NBA is on their own timeline, just like every college program, there's a, there's a different timeline for guys. So, um, you know, the one thing with both of our freshmen uh, and all six of our freshmen last year is all that whole group of guys has been incredible workers and, um, you know, Bay and, and Layden have great competitive nature and, and really, really work on their craft and um you know they work in the weight room and and um so it's you know like they're going to keep getting better as the season progresses 
but, but I'm, how, maybe how is it how good is it for them and for y'all you know for the team that you don't have to force feed them i guess so to speak that that you know they they can adjust at their pace probably yeah i mean i think that you know when you when you're on a you know a good team or a deep team um you know that there's always a you know there's there's pluses and and then there's areas you know that a player has to learn to to continue to grow in um you know practice game preps all those things are obviously new for for any freshman just no different than uh, uh all of our rookies that are in the NBA the game preps that they're going through are going to be slightly different than the way they were done at Arkansas and there's so many more games coming at you so I I, I mean I think that, that um you know for us uh we want all of our guys to try to continue to get better um every single day a question Nate Nate wanted me to ask if I could uh basically uh, that was obviously like you've said multiple times that was not your normal exhibition game the other day and you know the crowd was in it you got it was very emotional I guess and Nate was wondering um you know the emotional high of that for the team and the crowd and everything do you have to bring the team back down for this regular season game it's kind of weird usually regular season games are bigger deal than the exhibition but in this case you know, playing Purdue, that was probably a bigger, you know, that, that was a really big deal. Just kind of, did you have to bring the team down after such an emotional uh, exhibition game like that? Well, certainly hope that you have, uh, you know, great team-wide maturity. Um, but, but um, you know, we need to have better practices the rest of the week than than maybe what we've had um, Monday and Tuesday after, after being off on Sunday. So, um, you know, hopefully – um, you know, you never know till you play your next game. Uh, but certainly there was a, a, an emotional uh, feel that's that's not like many exhibition games. But that game is over. doesn't count. You got to look straight ahead. You can't look backwards. Um, you know, we're and we're, you know, we're going through some guys having, you know, some colds and some sickness and and uh, minor injuries just based on a physicality game that we played. And, and so we want to try to get healthy too before, before Monday as well. Yeah, I might have a couple more, but I'll turn it back to Mike for, for others. Thank you. <laughs> John. Uh, I didn't have a question, but coach, how was the Halloween party last night? It was a really cool, well-participated, Halloween party, really impressed with our guys' uh, costumes, um, overly impressed with uh, their engagement um, as trick-or-treaters or passing out candy. So it was a, uh, it was a really good uh, Halloween party with, uh, with some really good food. Andrew, you have a question? Yeah, Coach, I was looking at Alcorn State's roster. don't see a ton of overwhelming size or anything. So do you feel like this matchup might be a one where you can throw Trev in at the five and maybe experiment with what kind of smallish lineups you have with so much depth and versatility on the wings? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that, you know, every game, you know, Andrew just kind of, you know, like it's going to dictate in the flow of the game. I mean, you know, going into the Purdue game, we felt maybe we were going to have to play a big lineup and, Sure enough, when there was a timeout and, and we were getting ready to diagram plays and, 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 you know, TV was at the three spot and we really had not in practice skeleton, dry run, whatever you want to call it with him uh, at the three spot. So we were, we, we were able to experiment with our really big lineup, having two bigs in Brazil in at the three. Um, certainly, um, you know, you want to try to explore other lineups as as you get opportunities in certain games. I don't know how the Alcorn State's a really good rebounding team. Um, you know, sometimes six, seven, six, eight guys can out rebound six, nine, six, ten guys off quickness, off reaction, off um, you know, being scrappy. So um one of our concerns, one of our areas of of emphasis going into the Alcorn State game for sure uh, is is rebounding the basketball, especially rebounding the ball defensively. That's a that's a that's a that's a big part of our uh, emphasis because um, they do have guys that pound the offensive glass. 
you mentioned the rebounding with those group of bigs with, you know, we haven't seen Graham a ton, but with Lawson and Makai, I guess what's the key to separation between those three? Cause it seems like they're all pretty tight in terms of where they stand on the hierarchy with you guys. Yeah. And I, I think each guy does something different. You know, Chandler is just really, really solid. Um, you know, he follows a game plan. He, he can make a three. He's, he's got length to block shots. Kai is really, really good in our elbow offense where, where he can run DHOs and and uh, share the ball as a as a as a point center, so to speak, because he's a really good passer, um, you know. And and then Graham, you know, as we saw last year, um, you know, really good one on one offensive player with his back to the basket or in the mid post. Now, you know, we I've just kind of stated strengths. You know, now you're going to rebound. Where's your rebound minutes going to be? Um, you know, how much defensively can you be? How how good are you at getting loose balls? All, all of those things are going to be separators as we continue to, to evolve um, and figure out rotations and things of that nature. Curtis? It, it seems like, I, I guess, based on the preseason at least, that you guys will be shooting it better and be able to operate with a, a more spaced floor uh, curious, what does that do for a guy like maybe Makai? I mean, does having more room to operate unlock some things for him offensively? Yeah, I think that anytime, you know, the lane's not congested, you know, based on perimeter threats, what it does, Curtis, is it opens up dribble drive angles. Um, you know, we 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 need to be a better free throw attempt team. I mean, you know, we didn't we didn't attempt a foul shot against Purdue. Um, until 29 and a half minutes into the game. We have to do a way better job because historically our programs or our teams have been not good at getting to the foul line, but great at getting to the foul line. And and with the perimeter shooting threats, you'd think you'd be even better getting to the cup. But it, it we would hope that it opens up driving angles and post-ups for guys um, to have more one-on-one -on -one situations and not – uh, have defenders in the gap, so to speak. And then correct me if I'm wrong, but has the the pregame warm up routine from a couple years ago made a a return in some form or fashion? I I guess if so, what's the uh, what sparked the comeback there? Wow, Curtis, somebody finally picked that up. Um, it was it was really random. I mean, the the pregame warm up in the past had been something that we worked on all summer. Um, this is a variation. We took some stuff that we saw an Argentinian team run and we kind of mixed it in with some of the stuff that, um, you know, that my dad's team had done in the past. And, um, you know, it's, it's a smaller, shorter version, but, um, I'm glad somebody noticed. <laughs> Bob. Well, I, I heard sweet Georgia Brown, but it didn't look like as much stuff as you guys were doing a couple of years ago. It didn't look like the Globetrotters. So I guess I thought maybe it was more of a musical thing, but I'll, I'll have to pay more attention to that. <laughs> yeah, uh, please pay attention, Bob. Yeah. Hey, hey. Uh, plus my eyes aren't that good, you know, from way back there. Um, hey, get back to the rebound. I mean, obviously you guys shot great the other day, forced a lot of turnovers, did a lot of good things. But I think if I remember the stat right, Purdue was like 17 on second chance and um, like you say, you know, they, they got to the free throw line a lot more than you guys do. Uh, and I know, I think Purdue was a plus 11 last year. So it's not like, you know, they, they out rebound everybody by a big margin usually, but well, what do you think you guys got to do to rebound better? Be physical. Uh, I thought our guards did a great job rebounding. Uh, you know, T Mark was, you know, he, his rebounds per minute was, was good. Um, battle, uh, KB did a great job, uh, rebounding the basketball. Uh, so those two guys in particular, defensive rebounding were phenomenal. Our, we need our bigs to, you know, to rebound, although, you know, one of the assignments for the bigs was to just try to their best to keep Edie um, off the offensive boards. And, and, and I told him, if you block him out and don't get the ball, it is, it is one of our perimeter guys job to go collect that. And then offensive rebounding, we want to be better as well, Bob, I, you know, we need to go to the boards more. I mean, we are charting this year goes and no goes um, on offensive rebounds. We, we started doing that after the Purdue game. We charted it. We showed our players which guys went, even if they didn't get the ball, and which guys didn't attempt 
to go, both offensively rebounding and defensive rebounding. And so we're going to add some some things to the way we chart things just based on, um, you know, lack. it was really lack of offensive rebounding as much as any because Purdue really is a great, great offensive rebounding team. You know, I, th- I think Chandler said he he basically was hit, 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 you other guys get the boards. I think that was his quote or something to that effect. And then, you know, Bay's obviously a guy with a lot of length. Um, is he a guy that, as you know, if he maybe gets more minutes this game or, or plays, uh, could he help you rebounding? Yeah, I think Bay can help, you know, I mean, you know, <laughs> If whoever's not getting a minute on that night, you guys are going to ask me. We don't play Graham. You're going to ask if Graham should get in. If who's, where's the minutes going to come? You know what I mean? I mean, it's 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 hard to play for uh, interior players, Bob. I mean, there's there's only 40 minutes in a game, and and obviously Makai Mitchell started last year. Uh, we played Chandler a lot of minutes because he did a really good job. Um, so then that leaves Jalen Graham, who, you know, wasn't able to, to, to play last game. Um, and that leaves Bay as well. So, um, either we're going to have to, you know, play some guys shorter minutes, or we're going to have to play a bigger lineup. Um, because we did play Brazil even last game at the three. Um, normally he's going to play four and five for us, uh, based on his size and, um, so as we juggle the minutes around, you know, are you going to play less guards and play more bigs or are you going to, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's, it's, it's a, it's a decision game by game that we're going to have to make. You mentioned Jalen, How, how's his back doing? Any chance he could be back Monday or has he been able to practice at all? Yep. J- Jalen, Jalen is, uh, moving around much better. I think that, uh, his chances of playing are um, trending in the right direction where he will be um, I, again, back spasms can, you know, can, can change at any moment. Uh, but right now we are expecting Jalen to be in uniform um, on Monday. Yes. That's, that's the plan right now from a training perspective, strength coach perspective, doctor perspective and player perspective that he will, will be able to be in uniform Monday. And if you're trying to figure out minutes for all these guys, isn't that really kind of a good situation? Because there are probably coaches out there going, man, I don't have enough players. Who am I going to start? Who am I going to play? Who's my bench? And and you're trying to figure out how to get minutes for a McDonald's All-American, you know? Well, I think we're, you know, we're always trying. I mean, I think that even last year we were trying to figure out, you know, I think that's why, and I use the example all the time. That's, that's why a guy like Trey Wade went from having a bit role, uh, to midpoint of the SEC, you know, calendar to, to, to play in a lot, Bob. I mean, you get, you know, as a player, regardless of who it is, it's like, how do I get better every day? How do I have a great practice? Um, you know, that's, that's what you do as a player. How do I make sure that my game preparation, when we quiz our guys in film, you know, that I, that I'm answering, uh, you know, that I know the game plan and, and what, what we need to do as well. So there's a whole bunch of stuff that goes into how we have to, you know, divvy up roles and minutes and stuff. And then how good is, like, sorry, I'm doing something on a freshman. How good is it for like a guy like Layton? You got all these older guards. I mean, obviously he learns from the coach and staff and you guys coach him up, but he's got all these older guards to learn from. And, and Bay, Bay's got these older guys like Kai and, and, uh, you know, Chandler to, to learn from how, how good does it help those guys that they've got older players, not just the coaching staff, they've got older players that, that can help, uh, I guess, you know, coach them up and mentor them, that, that kind of thing. Yeah. I think that, you know, you, you always want to have veterans that are willing to share with younger guys. Um, again, I, I love to reference stuff that I've seen in the pros. I mean, there's a lot of veterans that last a long time in the NBA because they're great mentors uh, to incoming rookies. Um, Udonis Haslam, a guy that comes to mind, uh, Mike Miller was a great mentor to, 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 to rookies. And, um, so yes, I think L Ellis has done a great job of, of helping, um, Layton because, you know, all these guys, you're still in competition with teammates, no different than, than any sport at any level. Um, but I do think that, the, that this year's group of veteran players or this, uh, upperclassmen, um, have done a really good job of trying to help 
mentor both of our younger guys. I, I do think, you know, and only the two, you know, freshmen can answer how much the mentoring has helped, but, but I do see guys uh, and, and Justin Smith did a great job that year that, that we had the four freshmen, he and Jalen Tate were phenomenal helping Moses and, and, and Devo and, and Jalen and those guys. I mean, it, they did a great job. You saw it on a daily, daily basis. And this year's group does a phenomenal job. They do a great job just leading by example, let alone uh, just getting in guys' ears as well. But certainly leading by example is a, a, a great way to mentor a younger player. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate your time. Thanks, guys.